September 12, 2018. You are tuned into One Wrestling Video, and this is NXT. My name is Jargo. I'm the NXT digital reporter for One Wrestling Video. Two objectives once again tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Not only are we covering tonight's episode, September 12th's episode of NXT, but also the second episode of the Mae Young Classic, when This Is NXT becomes This is MYC. Lots to talk about again this week, so let's go ahead and jump right in. This week's show opens up with Tommaso Ciampa, the champion, making his way inside a Full Sail University, and the champ has no comment. He has no time for our opinions, our thoughts, our feelings. It's all about Tommaso Ciampa and the NXT title. I'm not sure that anybody inside of the sports entertainment universe at this point can say more by saying less than the champion, Tommaso Ciampa. We then got back inside of Full Sail University to kick off the action. One Two Punch makes their long awaited return inside of Full Sail. This, of course, Arnie Lorcan's first action since having his orbital, orbital bone broken at TakeOver Chicago by the Undisputed Era. They are taking on Caesar Bononi and Adrian Jaoud. This match, very much a feature for Lorcan and Birch, re establishing them as a tag team threat inside of NXT. We've talked many times on this show about how tag team wrestling is down all across the board right now. Whether it be NXT, whether it be Ring of Honor, New Japan Pro Wrestling, or even the WWE main product. Great seeing Oni Lorcan back in action. I love the combination of him and Danny Burch. I very much have felt that they are the next generation of DIY. I expect big things from both of these guys as we head towards TakeOver War Games. Next out is your NXT champion, the vile bastard himself, Tommaso Ciampa, complete with new entrance and new music. Uh, this is the first time the Sicilian psychopath has been back inside Full Sail since TakeOver Brooklyn. Ciampa informs us that his new music is his polite way of telling us all to just shut up. Ciampa is just killing it right now. He said he's heard all the whispers he, that he's the one that took out Aleister Black, but he says that if he's not the one that did it, when he attacks people, he does it on the biggest platforms, not sneaking around in the bushes. Ciampa says that he had all the intentions of taking out Black before takeover, but someone beat him to the punch. Isn't that exactly the same thing that Lars Sullivan said last week on NXT? He says just like the rest of us, he wants to know who took Black out as well, so he can pat him on the back and say, job well done. The champ informs us that it wouldn't have mattered, though, if it was Johnny or Black and or Black. The results don't change. Johnny loses, Alistair loses, and Ciampa wins. The Psycho Killer closes in saying that if you want to be a success, if you want to be a champion, then follow the lead of Tommaso Ciampa. Chump is just killing it. He is on a whole nother level right now. If you missed it earlier this week, the final roster for WWE 2K19 was released in Tommaso Ciampa, not in the game. Of course, everybody wanted to know why, and Ciampa responded on Twitter saying, I'm the champ. I don't lose. I don't lose in real life, and I surely don't lose in your fantasy world. Yes, thank you. Tommaso Ciampa, Kayfabe 2018, alive and well. I'm serious, guys. I hope Ciampa holds this title for the next three years. Keep lining up the baby faces. Let him keep knocking them down. I am completely fine with Tommaso Ciampa being that perennial main event act inside of NXT and never coming up to the main roster. Back from a WWE shop commercial and the former NXT Women's Champion, the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, is about to murder Violet Payne. This week representing the Job Squad, Baszler looks very unhappy before the bell and the Full Sail Faithful inform Miss Payne of what's about to happen, and they were right. Shayna's gonna kill you. After doing her best to break Payne's arm, Baszler locks in the choke and taps out Violet. Whole lot of nothing here, basically just setting up the post-match angle. After the match, Baszler kicks Payne a couple of times to make sure that she's unconscious, proceeds to make her exit. We go to some video highlights only to come back live and see Shayna return to the ring to get some more of Miss Payne. Baszler chokes her out again with two referees trying to get her to release the choke. She releases only to lock it back in a third time. Baszler then picks up and dumps Payne on her head out of the ring before finally making her exit. Shayna Baszler's pissed. 
that's pretty much the story going on here. She's pissed off that she lost the NXT Women's title. She's pissed off that she lost to Kyrie Sane again. And she is coming for retribution. I don't know when it's going to happen. I'm still thinking inside of the next set of TV tapings. I don't think that we want to go into evolution with this issue still hanging over everybody's head. Heavy machinery is then shown in the parking lot. They're out investigating the assault of Aleister Black as well. Why they care, nobody really knows. They say they have a number one suspect, and that suspect is Tomato Champ think what they meant to say was Tommaso Ciampa. They're then interrupted by the champion who says that if you're going to say his name, if it's going to come out of their mouths, they better have a little bit of respect on it. William Regal then joins them all inside of the parking lot, informs Tommaso Ciampa that he would like to speak with him in his office since he's been ducking his phone calls and hasn't been back inside a full sale since TakeOver. I don't understand why we're doing this thing with heavy machinery if this is just to get Tucker and Otis on the show for some reason. But then again, I'm not a heavy machinery guy. I never have been. I don't really understand what their purpose is in this entire Aleister Black storyline. Unless they're the ones who took him out, which also makes absolutely zero sense. Undisputed Era is then sh shown hanging out backstage at their lighting truss. It's like they have their own personal lighting truss just for cutting promo videos. It's re reserved only for Undisputed Era. They're talking some smack about the Sneak Attack Raiders, otherwise known as the artist formerly known as War Machine. Cole then puts over the Ricochet and Pete Dunn match for next week and redubs it the Adam Cole Invitational to see who is going to lose to Adam Cole. I don't think that either Pete Dunn or Ricochet is winning this match next week. This promo just reinstates my idea that the Undisputed Era is going to interfere in this match and we're not going to actually get any kind of a finish and this is all building towards NXT War Games. Next out is NXT's resident monster, Lars Sullivan. He's coming out to murder poor Raul Mendoza. That's uh, the agenda for Lars this week. Of course, a couple of weeks ago, we saw Lars murder Mendoza when Mendoza was hopeful to be taking on EC3. Mendoza is fired up for revenge and... Lars is amused by this. Mendoza plays a runaway stick-and-move tactics, but of course, eventually the beast from the Rocky Mountains would get his hands on the luchador, and it's all downhill for the, from there for Raul. Mendoza makes a brief comeback, only to be caught by the freak accident and then pummeled by Lars before a 1-2-3. Very much just a feature match for Lars Sullivan to reestablish him as a monster inside of NXT. I'm not sure when we're going to get this Lars Sullivan versus EC3 match. That ma match very well could be filmed at the next set of tapings as well because nothing about that match screams pay-per-view quality to me. NXT cameras then catch up with Pete Dunn outside earlier in the day. Dunn says that Ricochet has been a champion for all of about five minutes and Dunn points out that he is the longest reigning champion in the WWE. But all he really has to worry about is how he is going to fit two titles in his mouth after next week. We then catch up with Ricoch Ricochet, who says Pete <clears throat> is just another mountain that he needs to climb. It doesn't really matter how long he's been champion. Next week, he's walking out NXT's one and only dual champion. Not happening. Firmly believe Undisputed Era is going to get involved in this match. It's going to be a DQ. Both men are going to retain their titles, and we will just move on forward as we go towards War Games. After a Mae Young Classic commercial, we get a vignette introducing us to the Forgotten Sons. This was very, very odd to me. Of course, last week we saw them debut on television. This week we get the vignette. Wouldn't have it have made a lot more sense to run the vignette and then have their debut match, so maybe we actually cared about the Forgotten Sons when the match came due. I, the vignette was fine. I'm just not invested in any way, shape, or form. There are three guys walking around in cowboy boots, and we're supposed to care about that. Uh, then we have Cassius Ono. Cassius Ono back in Mr. Regal's office, and he says that he is there to give his take on what happened with Aleister Black, and William Regal informs him, we don't need to talk to you right now. And Ono is greatly offended. He's like, wait a minute, you're talking to guys like Heavy Machinery, you're bringing in this guy, you're bringing in that guy, and you don't even want to talk to me? And then William Regal informs him, 
we already talked to Kyrie Sane, and she had an alibi for you. But Ono is still going off on this disrespect tangent, and once again points out that he was the new best free agent coming into NXT, and then nobody cared because they brought in new, new best free agents coming into NXT, and whoever the next one is, Cassius Ono is coming to knock them down. I'm not really sure who's coming in unless he's talking about Keith Lee. I'd love to see Keith Lee versus Cassius Ono, but is there any other new signings coming in that we just don't know about? Matt Riddle? Is Matt Riddle's first feud going to be against Cassius Ono? I guess. I guess I wouldn't mind seeing Chris Hero versus Matt Riddle. I'm down for that. Main event time for this week's show, and the ladies of NXT are taking center stage. Uh, out first is the EST of NXT, Bianca Belair, and she is taking on NXT's resident lunatic, Nikki Cross. These two fight to a double count out, and I don't even really know what else to say about this match other than go watch it, because it's a ton of fun. More importantly, I kind of want to talk about Nikki Cross for a second. I was laughing my rear end off watching this match which is good but i'm not necessarily sure that the emotion that nikki cross intends to evoke is humor maybe we need to get nikki cross a little bit more serious maybe have her win a few matches because at this point i don't have any idea what we're doing with nikki cross i actually kind of hope that we would send her over to nxt uk or, I don't know, heaven forbid, we actually call her up to the main roster and make Sanity somewhat relevant. Doesn't make any sense to me. So that's going to wrap things up for this week's NXT. Let's throw things over to you. This is MYC. And just like that, let's talk about the Mae Young Classic. Your first match of the night, continuing round one, is the virtuosa Deanna Perrazzo taking on Priscilla Kelly. Some chain wrestling off the top as these two women kick off tonight's action. Deanna goes for an armbar early, but Priscilla gets into the ropes. Priscilla takes control for the second half or er, second part of the match, and Renee Young actually makes the comment regarding the similarities between Priscilla Kelly and your first NXT Women's Champion Paige. The look, the moveset, it's a very easy comparison to draw. After a big side Russian leg sweep, Perrazzo catches Priscilla in the armbar, Kelly taps out, and Deanna will be moving on to the second round. I don't think it's any big secret here that we are huge fans of Deanna Perrazzo here at One Wrestling Video. And of course, she's actually signed to an NXT contract. I do believe Priscilla Kelly may be signed now as well. Priscilla Kelly, the, the similarities between her and Paige are a little too close for my taste. I was never big on the whole goth girl Paige thing in NXT. If you were, maybe Priscilla Kelly is the right answer for you. But I think it's absolutely the right decision for Deanna Perrazzo to go moving forward. I did notice Deanna Perrazzo incorporating a lot of British wrestling style into her moveset these days. I wonder why. Maybe, um... Maybe a certain villain is teaching Deanna a thing or two. Your second match of the night is Ariel Monroe taking on the Luchadorus Zexis. Zexis? Ariel is huge over inside a full sale, as she is also known as Mrs. Cedric Alexander. Um, on Cedric also on hand, as well as their daughter, watching Mommy take on the force from Mexico. Ariel displays a ton of personality early as Zexus just gets physical and takes as many cheap shots as she possibly can, grabbing Monroe's hair for and for a luchadoras, very much a bruiser. Ariel starts her comeback, hits a big crucifix for a believable two count. Zexus out of nowhere hits a huge top rope Spanish fly and puts down Ariel Monroe, her daughter, crying in her father's arms just devastated watching mommy take this loss i don't know why we had the kid out there why she was involved at all if ariel monroe was just going to lose this match as far as the is concerned i don't have a whole lot to say about her because i absolutely thought she was going to lose this match but it does make sense we do need some heels moving forward into the second round as well we can't just do dream match dream match dream match throughout the rest of the tournament so it makes sense Tough loss, though, for Ariel Monroe. That one was kind of heart-wrenching. 
Next out is the returning Rena Gonzalez taking on Mighty Casey Catanzaro. Mighty Casey comes to us from American Ninja Warrior, this her long-awaited television debut. Huge height and weight difference between these two girls, quite the visual matchup. Reminds me of last week with Lacey Lane and uh, Vanessa Craven. <clears throat> Gonzalez all over Casey off the top. Casey goes for uh, uh, some stick and move offense, trying to get some kind of momentum against Gonzalez, only to be denied by the foot taller and 100 pound heavier Rena Gonzalez. Gonzalez keeps just pummeling poor Casey. This match all Gonzalez for basically the first 90% of the match. Gonzalez charges the corner, Casey ducks, and Gonzalez meets the post. After a series of drop kicks, Casey finally takes Gonzalez off her feet. But then Gonzalez gains the advantage again. She goes for a huge power bomb, but Casey rolls through, rolls up the much larger Gonzalez for a roll up three count. Mighty Casey moves on to the second round, even though this match was really all Rena Gonzalez. After the match, Rena goes to walk away. She comes back. Casey, of course, sells fear in every respect of the word. Rena basically picks her up like a little baby, puts her on her shoulder, and parades her around the ring, giving Mighty Casey her big moment inside a full sale. I gotta say, I was a little disappointed. Um, I, we, Rick Vickery and I, at the Hitting the Marks Pro Wrestling Podcast, we have been on this Casey Catanzaro story since she signed last November. I was very much looking forward to her TV debut, and then I saw she was taking on Rena Gonzalez. Rena Gonzalez is six foot tall and roughly 200 pounds. Casey is five foot tall and 100 pounds soaking wet. There wasn't a whole lot that Casey could do here other than create motion, and she did that very, very well. I look forward to the second round to see who Casey is going to be taking on and if maybe we can actually showcase her moveset a little bit since we really have no idea what she can do inside of the ring. Your main event of the night is... Ashley, don't call her Madison Rain, taking on the Mae Young Classic returning veteran Mercedes Martinez. These two of the more experienced girls in the tournament this year, and as a result, one of the more anticipated matchups of the first round. In the end, Mercedes hits a huge fisherman buster for the win, but this is a great match out of both ladies. Mercedes taking on Miko Sanomura in the second round, and I look forward to that matchup a lot as well. Let's start off with Mercedes Martinez. Of course, she just lost the Shine Championship a couple of days ago at this point to uh, Allison K, formerly Sienna in Impact Wrestling. I expect that we're going to see her probably next week. I don't think that'll be on Episode 4. I think she will be on Episode 3. So I look forward to that. Mercedes is very well documented throughout the professional wrestling scene. I'm very happy to see her move on to the second round. Which brings us to Madison, don't call her Ashley, or Ashley, don't call her Madison Rain. I'm absolutely heartbroken for Madison Rain here. I was really hoping that she would at least get one victory and move on to the round of 16, but no, she loses in the first round of the Mae Young Classic this year. Of course, last year, she was not even in the tournament. I believe she was an alternate. After all in, I became a Madison Rain fan. Yeah, I've been watching her for the better part of 10 years at this point, but it wasn't until just a couple of weeks ago that I really became a Madison Rain fan. She has entered into that second part of her career where I'm viewing her as legend status, even though it's really hard for me to call really any of the women that are currently active legends, with the exception of Miko Satamora. Really wanted to see Madison Rain get this win. I'm not disappointed with Mercedes Martinez moving on, but shout out to Madison Rain. You have done a great job here in the last year of completely reinventing yourself and turning non-fans, like myself, into fans. So that's going to wrap things up for this week's episode of This Is NXT. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button and the little bell so that you're always notified of all the new content here at One Wrestling Video. Hit me on Twitter, at NotJargo. Let me know what you thought of this week's show, as well as the May Young Classic. Then head over to hittingthemarks.podbean.com so you never miss any content from myself or my tag team partner, Rick Vickery, on the Hitting the Marks Pro Wrestling Podcast. This Friday, very, very special interview as we are bringing you the Australian sensation Craven from Down Under, oh yeah, and Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion Jay Lethal. Be sure to check out that interview. We'll talk to you here next week, next Wednesday, on This is NXT. For one wrestling video, this is Jargo, signing off.